is Dolores Long. Um, I'm on the IBMT committee uh, and I work with a northwest group of the IBMT in Manchester. Uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting evening because how could it not be when it's dealing with a man like uh, Sam Lesser, Sam Russell. Um, Jim is going to do, do you need to do some housekeeping or a little bit on um, all I can do, well, I'm Jim Jump, I'm the chair of the Sashby Gay Memorial Trust, and uh, this is a jointly sponsored event, jointly sponsored by the, uh, our hosts, our physical hosts, the Marks Memorial Library and the IBMT. Sadly, the library manager and archivist, Marianne Jump, has got a bug and um, caught in sick this morning, so I'm just here by way of saying. Uh, or now standing up to say, uh, to give her apologies, and to say in her stead we're going to show uh, a very short film, which I think she probably was going to show herself anyway, but again was jointly done by the IBMT and the Marks Memorial Library uh, to celebrate the importance of archives in remembering the international brigades. And that we did a series of films on various kind of themes like women, medical volunteers, and so forth, trade unions, and I think this one is on internationalism, isn't it? Uh, uh, which I think is very appropriate for Sam tonight. So this is by way of, uh, of say, I mean, look around and you see how important the Marx Memorial Library is. It's the uh, it's the main archive. You know, there are many fine archives around the country, but uh, this is the first port of call internationally for people who want to study the uh, uh, British response to the Spanish Civil War, and in particular the brigaders who went there, there's an extensive library, there's boxes and boxes of archives and, there's, and the whole building is full of stuff with the uh, Spanish Civil War. And in fact, if I just say, if Marianne is here, I know she would say, remind us all that the library was founded in 1933 in response to the rise of fascism in Europe. And many of the people most closely associated with the foundation of the library, um, Ralph Fox, David Guest, uh, the most killed in Spain as volunteers. Um, another one, Clive Branson, uh, was one who, someone who was closely involved and he put up some of the money for the purchase of this wonderful building. He fought in Spain, sadly killed in the Second World War. In fact, his daughter painted that kind of mural on the wall there. So this, this whole place is uh, full of history of the Insatch Brigades and uh, you can see the film. In the Spanish Civil War of 1936-39, to 39, thousands of men and women from around the world joined the international brigades to defend Spain's elected government against a fascist-backed military revolt. Um, I've been asked to say a few words about Sam and the IBNT. I mean, there was a lot more to Sam's life, obviously, in Spain and the uh, Insash Brigade Memorial Trust. Um, but, it, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm following on from that film. Uh, and it's a pleasure and honour uh, to be able to say some words about uh, Sam. Sam Lesser, as we knew him, obviously, rather than Sam Russell, which was his um, nom de plume, um, so to speak. Uh, Sam was a founding member of the International Brigade Memorial Trust, which was, in fact, born in this building, as you expect in a way, uh, in 2001. And there's a lovely photograph of Sam and other volunteers standing outside the front door with... Uh, family members and historians, uh, about 30 or so in the group, and they decided uh, to wind up the IBA, which was the Veterans Association, and uh, a separate organisation called the Friends of the Zash Brigades, and to form one group, the uh, IBMT. And uh, we haven't looked back since in these uh, 20 years, and we're a vibrant and very active association. <coughs> Sam was uh, 
our, he, he was a, a trustee from the, from the word go, uh, but he became our chair in 2006. Um, he succeeded Jack Jones, another well-known veteran of the International Games, who, who then became our life president. And I think it says much about Sam, that when Jack died in 2009, Sam declined taking the title of president that was offered to him, and he said he preferred to be the chair and didn't. Uh, he was a man of great, despite his immense abilities and, and huge character, which I'm sure we're going to hear about tonight, he always kept an abiding sense of uh, modesty and, and indeed humour about, about himself. And, that shone through in, in that he felt that Jack was a, uh, he very much looked up to Jack, in fact, um, could not be replaced in that sense. Um, now, I spent many hours with Sam, uh, both at IBMT events and indeed at his flat in Dumbarton Road off Brixton Hill, talking to him about Spain, about the International Brigades, and politics in general. Uh, I treasure those uh, those, those uh, conversations we had now, uh, uh, and they still come back to me. Um, first off, it has to be said, and you could I can picture Sam in his uh, in his flat in Dumbarton Road. He was a man of great cultural depth. Uh, I mean, it goes without saying he was extremely well read. He loved music deeply loved music, in fact he introduced me to Benjamin Britten's, uh, which was written for the return of the International Brigades in 1939, <coughs> with words by W.H. Auden and Randolph Swingley. Sam would sit there in his living room, sounding off, uh, surrounded by his, uh, his bulging bookcases and, uh, and uh, uh, works of Terry Frost, St. Ives artist, his favourite artist, uh, that it's, uh, he'd met Terry, which Sir Terry Frost, as uh, probably was in 2001, in 2001, at the opening of the Spanish Civil War exhibition at the Imperial War Museum. Uh, incidentally, Terry was uh, a working class Yorkshireman who learnt uh, art, or to learn to paint, while he was a prisoner of war, he was captured at Dunkirk, and uh, Terry's mother would send him, uh, sort of sent him a Red Cross food parcel for, to me, for her son, wrapped in the Daily Worker. So it's a nice <laughs> idea that he was uh, reading Sam's dispatches at, uh, at that time. Um, now, it's no secret that, and I'm sure the book, I haven't read the book, I'm really looking forward to reading it, uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll recount that Sam did have you know, a few bit mildly political regrets about his life, but never about Spain, never ever about Spain. And of course it was a decision that fundamentally changed his life. He went within a few weeks of being an Egyptology undergraduate at uh, University College London to uh, holding a gun at the front line in the university city of Madrid fighting the fascists. Uh, he was injured in Spain, and that's when he first became uh, a daily worker correspondent. And it was also in Spain that he met his wife-to-be, the volunteer nurse Margaret Powell. So this was, uh, you can imagine, he was a bright young lad from uh, the East End, scholarship boy, uh, destined probably for an academic career in this Spain absolutely changed the course of his life. Uh, regrets, I mean, there's one in particular, who, uh, certainly to me, he used to go on about, was the so-called Slansky trial in uh, 1952, which saw the execution of 11 leading Czech communists, many of them Jewish, and some indeed veterans of the international gays on trumped-up charges of treason. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm sure this features in the book, so. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and this, Sam was sent by the paper, by the Daily Worker, to, to, prior, to cover the trial. 
Uh, and in the final years of his life, when, when our, our, you know, we, we had our discussion, Sam kept returning to what happened uh, and asking himself out loud, just sitting a few feet away from these men in the courtroom, <coughs> he could have believed that they were guilty. And he would sometimes be in tears because of that. On politics in general, I mean, we actually we disagreed quite a lot at that time. This is the, uh, in the early 2000s, but always amicably. Sam had made a political journey, again, probably in the book. Um, and in the fi that final decade of his life, he was, in fact, a, a, a very um, keen supporter of New Labour, something which I wasn't. <laughs> so I still am not. <laughs> And, uh, and indeed, unlike Jack Jones, who had some very uh, uh, um, choice words to say about uh, New Labour in private, and probably in public, um, uh, and of course Jack was someone that Sam looked up to a lot. He, he held enormous respect for Jack, and again, uh, uh, one of his regret, one of the ways he expressed his regret, regrets is that he would compare himself unfavourably to Jack, and to point to Jack's achievements that he had made with the same essential world view as, as himself or two of them, but, but Jack had made them outside the party and Sam had remained more to the party. Again, I'm probably all that to the book. I have a host of other memories, vivid, very vivid memories of Sam over this period with the IBMT, uh, receiving his Spanish citizenship at the Spanish Embassy in June 2009 and announcing in fluent Spanish to everyone present, hemos tardado un poco, we've taken our time, we're a bit late, pero creo que hoy podemos decir que hemos llegado a casa, but today we can finally say we were home. And there weren't many dry eyes in the house when he said that. He and Ambassador Carlos Casajuana, that became a bit of a double act in those months, um, <laughs> With media and public appearances about the granting of citizenship and the, indeed the unveiling of the IBMT's anti fascistas uh, exhibition in venues in London in 2009-2010. As you'd expect, uh, Sam chaired IBMT trustee meetings, the laws were fair to Sam and mine, um, with, uh, uh, let's say, firmness. <laughs> he made he made uh, made uh, extensive use of his walking stick when <laughs> to, com <laughs> to command attention and to make his point. His word was final, of course. Uh, and while the rest of us, the trustees, would often be inclined to discuss things at length and in great depth, Sam would remain silent and then. Uh, he would, um, his judgment would be made and he would come down firmly one side or the other uh, and end all debate. And uh, an example that comes to mind uh, is the way he absolutely squashed any idea of the International Brigades being included in red copy or British Legion remembrance. Uh, I think mean, it's quite right and it's something which to this day the IBMT respects and I'm sure will continue to respect. I can picture Sam on top of, uh, in 2005 this was, sitting in the blazing sun on top of Hill 666 near Gandesa for the unveiling of uh, a memorial plaque to the 19th British Battalion dead at the Battle of the Ebro. Holding an umbrella over him and the three other brigaders was British military attaché Madrid Captain Rolo Mark Walker. He'd been brought along to the unveiling by Jeff Cowley, uh, the British consul in Barcelona. And when Jeff got up to speak and said he was proud to be uh, the first representative of uh, Her Majesty's government at the uh, Insash Brigade Memorial, Sam boomed about time too. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, that plaque now hangs in the memorial garden here in the months more arrived. It was, it was vandalised by Spanish fascists, neo-fascists, broken to three pieces. Uh, fortunately, the local council uh, in, in uh, the village near Gandesa, Pinot de Bray, replaced it 
we took the original back and we bought it here and it hangs in the garden and uh, it takes quite a place there in fact in the memorial garden. Um, there's a lovely picture of Sam in 2010 in Jubilee Gardens on the South Bank, uh, the site of the International Brigade National Memorial and where Sam often spoke with Rodney Bickerstaff. And Rodney is showing him cuttings of his dispatches, Sam's dispatches from Spain in a scrapbook that Rodney's mother, Pearl, <coughs> a young Yorkshire nurse, kept at the time during the war. I mean, There's unmissable presence uh, and interventions at many of the monthly public seminars run by Paul Preston at the London School of Economics, Canada Blanc Centre. And Sam, into his, well into his 90s, and whatever the weather, he would catch the 59 bus from Brixton Hill on a Thursday evening uh, to the Aldwych to attend these seminars. Finally, finally, I can picture Sam surrounded by the young, admiring cast of Goodbye Barcelona, and then <laughs> Carl Lefkowitz here, the writer of uh, Goodbye Barcelona, the award-winning musical telling the story of a young Jewish East Ender named, you guessed it, Sam, who joins the International Brigades. In the musical, there's a spoiler alert, if you know, it's a bit tough, <laughs> Sam dies. Thankfully, the real Sam survived Spain, and of all of us in the IBMT who have been inspired or touched by his life must be grateful for that. Thank you. Show another brief film showing Sam in action speaking at IBMT later. Bye. By, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, by Marshall Matea, who's a very fine filmmaker and is our film coordinator. Thank you for that. <laughs> Alma, which is the song what we sing when we gather together, there is a valley in Spain <coughs> called Chalama. Uh, a place that we all know so well. For it was there that we gave of our manhood, and so many of our brave comrades fell. of knowing Sam all my life because my father Sam Wilde fought side by side with Sam in Spain um, and also we have that shared history of the Communist Party and the little father were in the Communist Party um, and <coughs> the whole history of that um, I like Jim, spent many hours with Sam in his flat in Brixton listening to his tales and his stories. Um, and I could not believe the things that I was hearing. Um, his life was... He was at the front row of almost every major political event that happened. Um, you name it, he was there. Budapest, Prague, Khrushchev's speech, Chile, Cuba. Name a leading political figure, Che, Fidel, Paul Robeson, Dolores Iberori. Sam had met them all. So, hats off to Ruth and Colin for managing to put this incredible life down on paper. I have read the book, and it is an absolutely cracking read. It really is. Um, Colin tells me it was, took about 40 years <laughs> to do, <laughs> but it is well worth it. Um, it just is 
the history of every event in <coughs> your lives there. Um, described with Sam's astute and very shrewd journalist's eye and his brutal honesty. And I think you've just done an absolutely amazing job between you. But as well as the politics, there's also the most lovely little anecdotes and personal reminiscences. And I learnt a lot more about Sam's childhood and his growing up. Um, it's absolutely a wonderful book. And I wonder if you can start off, Colin, by telling us a little bit about how you actually went about it. Um, first of all, I'd like to see, it's wonderful to see everybody here. And it's actually surprisingly emotional for me because um, that actually goes back almost 50 years, in one sense. Because I started work not far from here, just across the road at the Morning Star, when I was 22, just out of college. Uh, I'm a complete novice. Um, and I used to sit in the newsroom, and this figure... Sam Russell, legendary figure, <laughs> old enough to be my dad. Um, and you can see from the film, those of you who didn't know him, why somebody of my generation <laughs> might have been inspired by this chap. And what was odd is actually my main memories of him one, him drinking sour milk from the windowsill by his desk, which he used to leave out. And the other one is being incredibly rude to people on the phone, <laughs> slamming the phone down, and then saying, well, he's bastard, well, uh, don't know their job, and all that. You know, he wasn't the easiest person to get on with. <laughs> but for some reason, he and I had a sort of, I don't know, it was a rapport, and I was working nights quite often, and I'd hear all these stories. And I'd say to him, you know, somebody from my generation, saying, we want to know more about your what you did. Why don't you write your story? And he said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Refused, point blank. Anyway, I cut. That's, uh, that was in the 70s, so that's my 50-year, almost 50-year bit. Um, I went on, I left full-time work at the Star, I was still the books editor, uh, and I was often used Sam to review books. And I ended up working at the Barbican, just that way, so I'm geographically still quite close. Uh, and so and I used to meet up for lunch uh, at the barbican and we'd chat and I had another go at him. Look, come on Sam, why don't you, you know, put your story out? No, he still wouldn't do it. Anyway, he, after he'd officially retired, we were still meeting up and I had another you know, crack at him and he said, oh, 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 oh. He said, oh, some of my comrades, their, their stories are coming out. I'm, uh, well, perhaps, perhaps we could do it. I said, well, look, look, Sam, why don't I'll agree to interview you. I'll take down what you say, and I'll turn it into your book, and you can check in and all this. And, and he said, well, it's all right, but you mustn't, mustn't, mustn't take me. So I had to do it all by hand. <laughs> <laughs> so we used to meet every well on a regular basis over lunch, and we'd start at the beginning, you know, where he was born, about his grandparents, and all that. Uh, and I it and anyway, when uh, we got to the end of, uh, and it was very clear that he wanted it to be about his time as a journalist, um, which is why it's called Sam Russell, not Sam Lesser, because he said he went out to Spain as Lesser, but he came back, but actually he went out to Manassa Lesser and came back with Sam Russell. But he, that's what he wanted it to be about. Um, and could tell well, all the things that Jim had, had alluded to. Part of the reluctance to do it himself is all sorts of conflicts about whether personal and political, about why he didn't want to be the one actually doing it. Anyway, he, he talked to me. Then I had family and I had to earn my living and I didn't have time to type all this stuff up. At this point, uh, another person enters the story, Chris Mind, who's sitting at the back, which is nice to see Chris. Chris had worked, I mean, he suffered from sitting alongside Sam <laughs> for many more years than I did and then became assistant editor of the Star. And Chris helped Sam out a lot and particularly after Margaret died, um, did a lot for Sam. And Chris did manage to take Sam 
uh, and Chris also had access to Sam's notes and some cuttings from the paper. Anyway, we, we got together and we put our two versions together and we actually had a, 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 a draft uh, before Sam died, but at that point nobody we couldn't get on to publish it. And we sent it to various people on the left press and they just didn't want to know. Anyway, it goes up and down and after Sam died, Chris did some more work on it. Uh, was by that time, we had files from the uh, uh, MI5 and all the secret police and all that sort of stuff. Um, and Chris had done more research uh, uh, on some of the, th the things that Sam was talking about. Anyway, we ended up with a, I don't know, over 200,000 words of Sam's story, um, which wasn't going to get published at all. Um, and in the end, I decided that uh, I would cut it down into a manageable size. And so we finally ended up with Routledge agreeing to do it. Um, and it's what we've been striving to do, although it's edited, is actually use the words that Sam used when he talked to us both. And I hope that we, whatever else you know, has been done, we captured the spirit of, of Sam um, in it. And uh, all I can say is. I want to raise a glass to him mm -hmm. and to nearly 50 years of struggle to get the book out. <laughs> but it is out, and I think, you know, following on from what Jim said about the importance of archive and history and memory, it's now here in print, uh, and I hope it does some good for future generations, as he did telling me his story to my generation. It's, uh, <laughs>